Hello everyone. I'm going to present the work that I've been doing as a part of my master's dissertation and it is on the Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a neurodegenerative disorder that is pathologically classified by the presence of intracytoplasmic Lewy bodies which contain the protein alpha synuclein. Uh, in its native monomeric form, alpha synuclein is highly soluble and a disordered protein. This transforms into insoluble and highly ordered aggregates of which contain uh, cross beta sheet rich amyloid structures. This happens via, uh, partially, uh, via partially folded intermediates and soluble oligomers. The sequence of alpha synuclein can be divided into three components. The N-terminal repeat domain, the NAC domain that is the non-amyloid beta component and the acidic C-terminal domain. The NAC domain is the one that is important for the, uh, for the aggregation of fi uh, fibrils. A large number of biomolecules have been tried to arrest or inhibit the aggregation of alpha synuclein. One such biomolecule is the small ubiquitin like modifier or SUMO. SUMO proteins are amongst the most soluble proteins known, which makes them candidates for uh, modulating disease conditions. It has been previously shown that the co covalent attachment of SUMO to alpha synuclein or SUMOlation is responsible for arresting the fibril formation of alpha synuclein. The objectives of this project are threefold. First, whether to, uh, to determine whether non-covalent interactions of SUMO with alpha synuclein play any role in inhibiting or retarding the process of alpha synuclein fibril formation. Second, to determine whether SUMO interacts non-covalently with alpha synuclein monomers or oligomers and to map its interaction sites. And third, to find out the mechanism by which the covalent attachment of SUMO to alpha synuclein inhibits fibril formation, whether it is doing so by providing any steric hindrance or whether it is increasing the overall solubility of the molecule. For this purpose, we designed a clone in our lab in which we fused the sequences of the two proteins, that is alpha synuclein and SUMO. So, the N terminal of SUMO was fused to the C terminal of alpha synuclein. Now, all the four proteins, that is alpha synuclein, SUMO, and the fused version of the two proteins were, were expressed as recombinant uh, GST tag proteins in E. coli BL21 DE3 cells and purified using GST affinity chromatography. Uh, since alpha synuclein is a heat stable protein, it was also purified using denaturing conditions, that is, without the GST tag. Now we move on to study the kinetics of protein aggregation. The kinetics of protein aggregation were studied using three techniques. The first is CD spectroscopy. CD or circular, circular diagram spectroscopy is used to monitor the changes in the secondary structure of the proteins. Second is thioflavin T fluorescence. Thioflavin T is a dye which is highly specific for amyloid fibrils. So thioflavin T fluorescence is used to study the increasing amyloid content during protein aggregation. And third is atomic force microscopy. Atomic force microscopy or AFM is used to image the fibrils that are formed during the aggregation process. Four study groups were used for the study. The first one was the wild type alpha synuclein which was taken as a positive control. The second one was an equimolar mixture of wild type alpha synuclein and the presence of SUMO. The third one was the alpha synuclein that was purified using non-denaturing conditions. And the fourth one was the fused version of the two proteins. Now, if we look at the thioflavin T fluorescence graph, uh, we can see that alpha synuclein over here is giving high amount of fluorescence, which is supported by the CD spectroscopy uh, spectra, and it is showing a rich beta sheet uh, transformation of uh, random coil to beta sheet content from 0 to 48 to 72 hours, which is which is characterized by a uh, minima at uh, 222 nanometers. And in the AFM image, we can see mature fibr fibrils that are formed. The second is the equimolar mixture of uh, wild type alpha synuclein with SUMO is, is showing uh, a little lower uh, thioflavin T fluorescence when compared to the wild, wild type alpha synuclein, which is supported by the CD spectra. Uh, the protein over here remains in a random coil conformation for a longer period of time. And by the 72nd hour of the protein aggregation process, we can see that there is some amount of helical as well as beta sheet structure 
by the uh, in the CD spectra. Uh, this is also uh, supported in the atomic force microscopy images in which we see uh, short fibrils and some amorphous aggregates. So there is a, a clear difference between the wild type alpha synuclein fibrils which are mature and long and the, uh, and the fibrils of alpha synuclein in presence of sumo which are short and there are some amorphous aggregates. Next we move on to the, uh, uh, the thioflavin T fluorescence of the alpha synuclein which was purified under non denaturing conditions that is the GHT affinity chromatography. We see that over the green uh, the green curve over here is showing very negligible fluorescence as compared to the wild type that is the red curve in the thioflavin T fluorescence. The CD spectra remains in a random coil conformation throughout the 72 hours and we, uh, we see at 222 nanometers or a slight dip which is showing that by the 72nd hour it is starting to form mature fibrils and it is also showing no uh, mature fibrils in the atomic force microscopy. The same goes for the fused version of the two proteins in which there is a very negligible thioflavin T fluorescence and the random coil conformation is seen throughout the 72 hours in the CD spectra. Next we want to move on to so figure out how sumo is act, is covalently uh, acting or interacting with alpha synuclein whether it is in, uh, interacting with its monomers or its oligomers so what we do over here is we prepared n15 labeled alpha synuclein and we record an hsqc spectra in the nmr so uh, the red spectra is the hsqc layout of alpha synuclein and the top one is uh, the top one is one for the, uh, for the uh, alpha synuclein monomers and in that the green spectra is the HSQC of the alpha synuclein in presence of an equimolar mixture, equimolar mixture of sumo. So we see very few peaks which are shifting uh, showing very weak interaction in between uh, alpha synuclein monomers and its oligomers. If we see uh, the isothermal titration calorimetry of the two proteins it is, it is showing some weak to moderate interaction which is supporting the NMR data. Now what we wanted to do was we wanted to titrate the labeled alpha synuclein oligomers with sumo. So we prepared uh, alpha synuclein oligomers, we isolated them uh, from the aggregation process and we recorded the HSQC which is the red spectra and the green spectra was recorded later on in the presence of equimolar mixture of uh, sumo. So uh, we see in the red spectra, uh, there, are there are a large number of peaks and which are not present in the green spectra. So we can see that SUMO is having uh, strong interaction with alpha synuclein oligomers leading to peak broadening and ultimately the disappearance of peaks. Uh, now when in an NMR spectra, when the peaks are disappearing, it is classified as very strong interaction. So we can see over here that SUMO is interact interacting non-covalently uh, it is showing a high, highly strong interaction with alpha synuclein oligomers. So during the oligomer formation of alpha synuclein, the hydrophobic surfaces uh, are exposed during the aggregation process and that is when SUMO is going and interacting with the oligomers. <coughs> uh, so we can conclude from this that uh, the non-covalent interactions of SUMO have some effect on the, not on the delaying or inhibiting of the fibril formation process but it has uh, some effect in changing the morphology of the fibrils formed and also on the density of, of the fibrils formed. Uh, the second conclusion we can make over here is that SUMO is interacting with the alpha synuclein oligomers and not its monomers. And the third uh, and the most in interesting conclusion over here is that SUMO is increasing the overall solubility of alpha synuclein by binding to the monomer uh, by covalent binding to the monomer and it is increasing the solubility of the monomer and not letting it assemble into insoluble aggregates. It is not providing any steric hindrance to the monomer because it remains in a random coil structure throughout uh, the aggregation process in the as we can see from the CD spectra. And finally we can see that alpha synuclein that is purified under non denaturing conditions that is the GST tag chromatography, uh, GST affinity chromatography is not aggregating or is aggregating very slowly compared to the wild type alpha synuclein. And we can also say that uh, since the GST uh, affinity chromatography involves a GST cleavage by the precision enzyme, 
there are five residues present in the n terminal uh, domain of alpha synuclein so these five residues or the non denaturing conditions of alpha synuclein are are not allowing it to aggregate into fibri fibrillar forms so this is uh, what we have till now and we are further going to uh, study the itc of the oligomers as well as uh, sumo so that is it thank you